Let's get started! <laughs> Clever comrade. What's this? It's a pomegranate. It looks just like the little person. How so? Look at this. Hey little person come over here. This fruit looks just like you. Whoa. Alright let's begin. Okay here we go at another ant video. MHA chapter 379. It's another one of those chapters that start with a flashback. Because there's nothing that helps story flow more than good old fashioned flashbacks. But seriously. These flashbacks are getting annoying. These things should have been shown as is instead of just being crammed in at the moment some character becomes relevant. Anyways. Do take note that this video will not be a full recap. We are just gonna be talking about things that don't make sense. But before we start let me say a little something. So in the last chapter, it's revealed that this teeny tiny little adult is the one responsible for hacking into Feel Good Inc's servers a long time ago, causing them to lose a great deal of money. For some reason it's treated as a joke. Look at how they're even drawn with stupid faces. Apparently, making a random tech company lose billions of yen is totally okay and funny. Because one person out of the entire business is a bad guy, therefore everyone there deserved it. Yeah don't expect this dwarf to ever get punished. Okay that's enough about the MLA being absolute losers. Let's get on with the rant. So this chapter has three distinct segments. The Marksman flashback, the Vestige shenanigans, and Handerman's fourth and probably final evolution. Yeah I know the Handerman segment is the main event of this chapter, but let me rant something about the Marksman flashback segment first real quick. Okay. So this short flashback sequence is clearly intended to be another one of those look at me I'm injured but I'm still fighting sort of scenes. Exactly like Bunny Gal's rampage just a couple of chapters ago. While it's nice and all. But Marksman didn't really announce anything to the heroes that she's going to help, and immediately just started shooting the moment she reached a good vantage point. What if a character suddenly jumps into shove Handerman's hand away at the same time her bullets arrive? What happens now? But luckily for her, the plot prevented anyone from intervening, so she didn't hit anyone but a target. Additionally, the plot also made Handerman extremely brittle, despite being almost invulnerable just some chapters ago, just so she could truly show off and be amazing. But seriously, this little marksman segment felt forced as hell. Just look how conveniently timed it is. Marksman woke up, demanded to help, waddled all the way to the roof and then immediately found a perfect sniping opportunity, before passing out. Also Falcon just easily shoving Handerman off just a couple of panels later, made the entire thing even more forced. Okay that's enough about Marksman, let's move on to the main event. Handerman and Deadline. So a whole lot of people like this part of the chapter, mostly because of Handerman pointing out how stupid Deadline is, and also because of how stupid Deadline is. While yeah everyone already knows how dumb Deadline is at this point. But I couldn't help but notice how his stupidity is dialed up to 11 here in this chapter. Look at how he's surprised that he got taken over. Just how in the hell did Deadline not notice he's about to get taken over? Handerman blatantly took control multiple times during the entire battle, even forming his entire family on his hand. In fact it's so blatant and obvious that heroes are already pointing it out. With all this, just how in the hell he still got blindsided. Anyways, since he still somehow got blindsided, he called Grillby for help. And then Grillby won't help. So let me get this straight. Deadline's ass pull device managed to get these two idiots teleported into Gunga Mountain. And then he can't get Grillby to teleport himself to his other self. Isn't his voice even one of the requirements for waking Grillby up? Why is Grillby suddenly not listening to him? Are you saying that teleporter dude's perfectly fine with following Deadline's ass pull device's instructions, but not the real Deadline? This is absurd. At this point the plot is now clearly working against Deadline. It's like the story is driving up his patheticness through the roof just so Handerman could show off. And speaking of Handerman. So he got out now. And also made sure to roast Deadline along the way. Before retaking his real body back. This whole thing is presented as a massive epic super duper awesome win for Handerman. Even though all he really did was just sit quietly in a corner and wait for the plot to break him out. 
No seriously how do you think he knew what to do to eventually break free? Also now that I think of it, what does Erasure got to do with Handerman breaking free anyway? How come he only broke out once Erasure's disrupted? Is it because there's something that Erasure's suppressing? But Handerman didn't really say something about Erasure affecting his breakout in any way. Maybe he just doesn't want anyone staring at him before he changes? Makes sense to me. But anyways let's move on. So about Handerman getting pushed out of the floating fortress after regaining control of his real body. How come he didn't react at all as he was sent down? He didn't move he didn't fire off a single quirk nor even tried to use decay. He just straight up didn't react at all. Before gently being set on the ground. You can tell he's not even slammed in because of a lack of an actual crater. Now of course this raises an obvious question. Why would Fall can place Handerman onto solid ground? Out of all the places to put him in. Why solid ground? Well come to think of it. It was also Falcon who just left Libera as is without at least knocking her out, resulting in a massive sad man's parade. Now, he straight up puts Handerman on the ground and is not even concerned that he's about to touch the floor. Falcon is trying to prolong the fight, what a hero. Overall, the whole chapter is just a setup, sprinkled with a very forced and awkward marksman scene. Also I just gotta say that Falcon's obsession with saving Handerman is getting really creepy. I mean come on man, the guy doesn't want to be saved. Just go beat him up and stop acting like an obsessive ex-boyfriend. Alright rant's over. Hey Deadline there's a newly opened cafe just across the street. Let's go check it out. Drinks on me. Okay. As long as you're paying. Little person enough messing with your tiny form we are leaving. <laughs>